So yesterday, Tori and I got to go to see Lauren Graham. It was a book tour for the paperback release of her book. Have I told you this already? She wanted to do it with it when the book first came out, but she got COVID. So she was doing it now. It was a real simple event. It's an hour long. And she came out uh, and she had her friend Sam Pancake. Is that really his name? Her friend Sam, who's been in some things with her, with little small roles. And they did a Q&A. And he would ask her some questions and she would talk about writing and books and a little bit Gilmore Girls. And then she took some questions from the audience that people had written on a piece of paper as they came in. So I tried to do a little vlog of the event. Not sure I got any footage. They told us we couldn't film. I filmed a little in anyway and took some audio, hopefully. I haven't even checked to see how that sounded. Um, also, we didn't think we were gonna be able to get a signed book because she wasn't doing a signing or anything. And the only way to get a signed book and to meet her was to pay $200 for this event, uh, get the VIP treatment, right? So we decided not to do that. And I didn't think that they would have any signed books there, but they had some leftovers. And we managed to get one of those. So we did at least walk out with that and it feels cool to have that, I guess. But it would have been really cool to meet her, but I guess she only can do, you know, a little handful. So, so let's go and see how that all turned out. Come along with us for the journey. <laughs> So we're here for Lauren Graham. Oh boy. I guess you're gonna be sitting there doing Q&A in a minute. They say we can't do videos, so I can take some pictures, but I won't be able to film anything. Do you have anything to say? Excited? Um, it would be weird if I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're excited then. <laughs> oh yeah. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun seeing her in person. We, we love her. Stood in line for an hour, and now we're gonna sit in here for an hour. You and you know who you're gonna fall in love. I don't know. This is like you just get to do it with knowing more, and so that was a framework I felt like to write uh, talking as fast as I can. He took me to the theater, and he was a single dad for a while, and I don't think it was so much for my cultural enrichment as that he didn't know what to do with me. Like, he'd be like, I don't know, we'll take her a play, or we'd go to the museum, or whatever. And um, so, to me, it's all almost the same part of the brain. It's like, as a writer, I kind of get to play all the characters, which is fun. Um, but yeah, they're all just sort of storytelling. But there were, um, you know, pictures from her. She was Sheila in her chorus line on Broadway, and there was like pictures of her with her leg in the air. And you know, she was a dancer. Um, and some of the chorus line friends were it, at the party, right? Priscilla Lopez was there, and um, yeah, she's she's just an incredible person, and she was always like very something in my life that I don't have a lot of. Um, which is like a really bossy friend, and I, I can do better. If you want to. <laughs> try harder. And she, um, but but really protective of me all the time. And like I tell her about some date I had or something, and you know where another friend might be like, oh yeah, maybe it'll work out. She'd be like, well he sounds terrible. Don't call him again. <laughs> because she has no filter. <laughs> self-proclaimed old enough that she doesn't care and I don't know. I don't know what she's going to say. I'm going to be first in line for yes. that and I'll tell you what. I'm just afraid. I love how long the show has lasted. It's just bringing us together and it's brought me so many wonderful things but I do worry about the day where small children start to be like why does she look like that? 
And then I had, and then I have sometimes just like there's weird things that happen, and I don't even know. I uh, so I I was having a massage once, and at like a you know retreat kind of place. And he was like, you know, and first of all, don't talk masseuses. Don't, don't talk. He's like, they tell us a lot of celebrities come here, and I was like, Ugh. and he goes, but I've never seen anybody. <laughs> And then he goes, but you look familiar. <laughs> now, just to recap, I'm face down, <laughs> naked. <laughs> well, what part of me is he recognizing? If I wanted to start a book club, rule of three, this week, what book should I suggest to my group? Just to her book club I understand group. the question. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little nap. <laughs> uh, I don't know you, person who wants to start a book club. A book that I don't know anybody who has not enjoyed this book. That was a terrible sentence, but you know what I'm saying. It is Tom Lake. Oh, yeah. Tom Lake. It is about family. It's really cozy and um, it has a little bit of like Hollywood in it, but not really. And it's also kind of this mom telling her girls stories of, um, of her that they thought they knew or never knew. And it's got like a nice multi-generational thing. What books are you reading right now and what music are you listening to? Oh, wow. Um, I just finished a book called The Beasting, which is so intense. Um, it, hold your applause. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, it's like 600 pages. It's a dysfunctional Irish family. It was just amazing. Um, I liked, I'm also reading, um, I like to read all the like Reese book club picks and today's show because they, I just like seeing what they, what people who are picking books for like a lot of people, what they are um, doing. And uh, I'm trying to think of the thing. Oh, and I'm reading. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. The Kristen Hanna, the women about the nurse in Vietnam. Oh, it's so harrowing and people, oh, yo, yo, yo. but um, it's beautifully written. It's just like war. Okay. <laughs> Bringing everybody down. Um, music. I just listen to everything, and I just got a turntable, and I'm starting to collect albums because I really love listening to something beginning to end, and so that is um, not how music is made anymore. So, I mean exceptions, but so I am collecting my favorite albums, starting with Joni Mitchell, Fleetwood Mac, like, just some classics. Stevie Wonder, Dolly. Yeah, yeah. Stevie Wonder. Uh, what is one thing on your bucket list? Hmm. Um, it can be taking me on a trip somewhere. Taking Sam to, I don't know. I, um, I really love Japan. I'd like to do another trip to Japan. I'd love to take my dad to Japan, actually, because we've done a bunch of bike trips together. You should tell me about the bike trips. Like, you did that one and you got lost. That's a whole other show. So. Okay. That's a good show. I take my dad, he's 80 now, and I, or he's 81, and I, I'm not sure, not because he can't ride a bike, he can, but it's, I don't know, it's, I always say, even when we were all younger, I'm like, can't we just do a trip? Why do we have to? It's like summer camp for, for grown-ups. Like, you have to meet in the lobby at 8 a.m. It's too early. I don't want to do that. But anyway, I would like to take him on, like, one more biker active trip, maybe to Japan. Um, we kind of covered this, but have you gotten a sneak peek at Kelly Bishop's new book? No, and I'm scared. <laughs> Bad Santa is a Christmas classic. Oh, <laughs> Not if you're my dad. <laughs> oh, right. Oops. Um, uh, right up there with Die Hard and It's a Wonderful Life. Wow. Was Billy Bob Thornton really drunk in some scenes? <laughs> um. <laughs> Billy Bob was one of my favorite actors to work with. Notice how I don't answer the question. <laughs> and I know. He was very just like himself. He would, he would if 
whatever. And one thing I like about him that I had never encountered before is he saw a, the movie finished and somebody said, what did you think? And he said, I wouldn't change a thing. Which as someone who's always like, I don't know, why, why is my hair like that or whatever? Like I, I live for the day when I could watch something that I was in and be like, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm fantastic. <laughs> Oh, maybe he was drunk. Anyway, moving right on. <laughs> Do you drive a Jeep now? No, and, and no, but actually I, in this, I moved and my garage is really short and I need a short car, so maybe I will ha have a Jeep. But when we did um, uh, Netflix, one of the first things I asked Amy weirdly was like, do I still have the same car? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, is it still like flesh color? Yeah. And I was like, okay, you're gonna get a new car. <laughs> but then Rose would have had fun scenes. Oh, I know. Gypsy would have all this stuff to do. Uh, big fan of Paul Anka. <laughs> you were naming a dog after a celebrity, who would you choose? You can't say me. Stop it. <laughs> After celebrity is my first question. Stevie Nicks. I'm trying to get these in a the, the good order with the flow, and this flows. Oh, wait, with the poodles already. Oh, there's more. Would you marry Kirk? Caroline <laughs> Kirk and Mary. No. over this a little bit, but uh, how long did it take to film an episode of Gilmore Girls? Eight days. Yes. Um, and trying to think if there were ever any exceptions to that. I think when we did Netflix, maybe we had, those scripts were like this. Maybe we had, I don't remember, we must have had 10 and we might have had 12? I'll find out. The next time I see you guys, I'll let you know. <laughs> have you tracked that blue coat down yet? No. I know, and the, the nice people got me a new coat. It's not blue, and it doesn't say anything on it, but I don't know. What coat are we talking about? I'm sorry, what coat are we talking about? Am I a bad Excuse friend? Excuse me, do you even know me? <laughs> I had a coat that I had stolen from wardrobe in 2000, whatever it was, seven or eight, that Brenda made us all. It was a cozy blue, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that said property of Gilmore Girls costumes, and I took it. And then when we came back, I, I brought it to set and it was my set coat. And oh, then I'm like, oh yeah, no, I remember that. And then yeah. on one of the last days I had it over my bicycle and I went back to get my bicycle and it was gone. Which means whoever has it, stand up right now. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe that's All why they asked the question. Given. I feel like I dream that like someday they'll send it to like my agent or something and I'll get it back. But like, like Sex in the City, I can leave on all day, or like, there's a bunch of 80s, 90s movies that I'll just like splash, or Tootsie, or When Harry Met Sally, or like, you know, movies that I love anything that's New York that, that still had a lot of yellow taxis. <laughs> and then, and I know this is strange, but also if it's on, I cannot tear myself away from Godfather One and Two, which is not technically comfort show, but I think I'm just so fascinated by the acting or something, the filmmaking. A lot of death. I get to experience it and talk about it and think about it again, and it's just that I had one amazing character like that in my career if, if, if we never work again. Um, that's okay, because I had something that was so special. <laughs> and so, um, such like a, a perfect fit for me. And I just want to say thank you to you who've kept it alive and shared it with younger generations and rewatched it a million times and get excited when we see each other in the airport. And like every time it just like, it fills my heart with love and I send that love back to you. And thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much.